show you how I made a cute little card. Well, at least I think it's a cute little card uh, with the Stampin' Up! Little Dreamers stamp set bundle. And I did use a couple of the other die sets in here, and I'll tell you which ones those are um, kind of as we go through the card making process here. Uh, but just kind of wanted to get things set up and uh, make sure that I'm relatively straight on the screen, <laughs> hopefully. Um, as we get going. So, all right, so this is the card we're gonna make today. It's actually pretty simple. There are just kind of a, couple, a lot of die cuts involved in it. That's the main thing is that it, that's the part that will take you just a minute is just to get the die cutting done. But once you do that, it's pretty easy. Just to assemble it and it's ready to roll. So this is the stamp set. Um, so again, it's called Little Dreamers, perfect for baby cards. Um, we also use this at our team meeting over the weekend. And uh, one of my team members, Akiko, actually actually suggested that this one would be perfect for a little, you know, maybe a one-year-old or two-year-old birthday card as well. Um, you could really easily switch this out, I think. And um, she agreed that the change the sentiment to a happy first birthday type sentiment. And I think it'd be perfect for that as well. So hey, Pam and I own, thanks for hopping in today. I appreciate you being here. So this is a stamp set. Like I said, it's got some cute little images in it, um, really good sentiments for baby cards. And again, you could switch it up to be birthday cards if you wanted for a little one for birthdays. Um, this is the die set that coordinates with it. Again, it's called Little Dreamers Dies. And this one will cut out your little lion. This one cuts out the cow. This one cuts out your elephant. Um, there's the one that cuts out the little chip chipmunk or squirrel or whatever that is uh, with the net. Uh, one that'll cut out your... Um, rainbow with the star and then the little stars as well and then there's some accessory die cuts so there's this one that's the moon and then the two clouds and I use the two clouds uh, on my card today and then as well as one that will cut out just sort of like a background of stars or if you wanted to put a border of stars or something like that um, you could do that with that die. So let me set that aside and grab a couple of the other things that I used on this. Um, I used these Stylish Shapes dies, which is one of my very favorite sets. This is from the annual catalog as well, from the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. And I used the second largest, if I can get it off here, uh, of the circle dies and um, used that to cut out, again, just a little circle here on the background of the card. Hey, Mimi, thanks for hopping in. And um, then I used the Patchwork Pieces dies. And this is the one that I used on the card today. And this one's actually kind of cool. If you're gonna do a card with it um, and do like I did on the background, basically you can make two cards with it with, um, but, by cutting the same piece of, you know, you're gonna cut the, the piece of designer series paper, it's gonna cut the whole thing. And then you can take half of them and put them on one card and half of them and put them on the other card, which is exactly what I've done. Um, so you'll see as we put it together that I'm just gonna flip flop where the little die cuts are in here, where the green and the purple ones are. So um, it's a great little die set again from the annual catalog. And um, I haven't played with this one yet, but I've seen a couple cards made with it and it's really cool as well. So. Uh, again, it's called Patchwork Pieces, and it is the uh, die set from the annual catalog. And then the final die set that I used, I swear there's only, what, four die sets <laughs> involved in this one. Um, this is the uh, Nested Essentials dies, and I used the smallest of the little rectangle dies to cut out the sentiment on here. Um, this is, again, one of those, it's a new set uh, in the annual catalog, and a really good one uh, for just all sorts of, you know, great sentiment shapes, um, image shapes. So it's, a, it's another one of those good ones that, you know, everybody should have. All right. Um, last thing that I used on here. Hey, Marilyn and Connie. Uh, thanks for joining today. This is the little polka dot embossing folder from the online exclusive set. There's a set of three embossing folders and they're called basics. 3D embossing folders, and there's one that looks like a crosshatch, which I absolutely love, and I use that one all the time. Um, there's this one with the polka dots, which I also absolutely love, and I use it a lot. And then there's one that has little, looks like little flowers on it. So it's a set of three embossing folders. The only way you can get them is with the set of three. Um, and again, in the online exclusives, in the Stampin' Up! online store, if you go out to the stampinup.com and then go down the left-hand side for where the menu is at and go to uh, search all products, and then underneath one of those options says online exclusives. If you scroll down, you'll find it and all the online exclusives are listed out there. All right. So before we get going, let's do a little bit of talking about uh, some things going on with Stampin' Up! right now. Hey, Debbie, thanks for joining. Um, Stampin' Up! has a really awesome joining promotion going on right now for the month of June. If you are uh, not currently a demonstrator, it's a great time to join. 
Um, you actually get 30 additional free dollars in products in your starter kit. You still pay $99 uh, plus tax if that applies in your area. Your kit will ship for free and you get to pick $155 worth of whatever merchandise you would like from Stampin' Up! in your starter kit. It's completely customizable. Whatever you want, um, you can get. And um, yeah, it's a great deal. Once you join, then you get at least a 20% discount on all your orders. We have the new mini catalog that'll be coming up to pre-order for demonstrators in the month of August, and um, we'll go live for customers in September. Right now, there are some new um, online exclusives that demonstrators can pre-order, and the designer series paper sale that is going on. Um, also, if you add the designer papers to your or your starter kit, you get the discounted prices on those as well. So let me know if you have questions about that. We'd love to have you come join us. We're a very relaxed group of stampers that really just love stamping and uh, stamping up products. So come join us. Um, again, the details are on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. So let me know if you have questions about that. We'd love to have you come join our little team. Um, and then the designer series paper sale that I already talked about a little bit. There are 13 packs of designer series paper from the current annual catalog um, that are on sale for 15% off during the month of June. And there are lots of pretty papers in there. So um, take your pick. Again, 15% off during the month of June, which is a really good deal. And there is one of them, the Hello Irresistible 6x6 paper is actually one of the online exclusives as well. And that one is also on sale. Um, again, 15% off for the month of June. And let me know if you have questions. Again, details are posted on my blog and you can see an enlarged version of this flyer so you don't have to try to squint and read the little tiny print on the video. And um, then the last thing, I, I also talked a little bit about online exclusives earlier um, since the embossing folders from there, but there are some new ones that we have got a uh, demonstrator pre-order going on right now. And again, if you join during the month of June, you can add these awesome items to your starter kit. So you'll see them out there as options to pick. Um, there is some Christmas stuff that is coming up in the new uh, online exclusives. These will be available for customers to order starting on July 6th. But again, as demonstrators, we can pre-order them this month. Um, so yay for that. So it's a bundle, beautiful. Um, I did do a little playing yesterday with the designer series paper on it and it, the paper is amazing. I also did a video a couple days ago where I showed you all the pieces of paper in it. It's fantastic. Um, and then we have the Timeless Charm bundle, which is some pretty flowers and um, you know just pretty sentiments and some great die cuts. So these are all available in the online exclusives for demonstrators to pre-order now and customers to order beginning on July 6th. All right. After all that, yeek, let's get going on the card making. So my original card I had made as a top fold because that is my preferred card base. Um, I know a lot of people like the side fold one, so I like to show you that you can also usually do most of my cards with a side fold. Um, so this is crumb cake cardstock. My original one is four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half across the top. This card base we're gonna be using today is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored right down the middle at four and a quarter. So again, whichever your preferred card base is will work. Um, and then I've embossed ahead of time a piece of um, crumb cake cardstock, again, with that uh, little polka dot folder from the 3D Basics embossing folders from the online exclusives. This piece of cardstock measures about four and a quarter by five and a half, so it should, if I've measured everything correctly, should cover the entire card front. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue to stick this down. And I do get questions sometimes when I'm um, doing a card front like this and embossing the whole thing, why don't I just emboss the actual card front? And there are a couple of reasons for that. The first one is I find it very difficult to get the um, card front embossed straight when I'm trying to stick the card base into the embossing folder. And then sometimes they don't fit through the machine very nicely. So I find that if I just chop a piece of paper that is the same size as the card front and emboss that and then stick it to the card front, nobody knows the difference. Well, except you and I, because you saw me put it together. Um, but nobody can tell the difference. And then it just looks like you've embossed the card front. And plus, you don't get the bumpy stuff on the inside of the card either. So, all right. That's a lot of yakking to say, um, just emboss a piece of cardstock. <laughs> so, all right. So ahead of time, again, I used the patchwork pieces dies. And I used this one in particular. And I just die cut two pieces of the Suttles designer series paper. And I used Fresh Freesia and uh, Soft Sea Foam are the two colors that I used. Um, I think you could switch this out again if it, you knew it was a girl and you wanted to do pink and yellow or pink and orange or pink and blue or pink and purple, whatever, you could change these colors up to be whatever you want them to be. Um, if you know it's a boy, you can do blue and yellow or blue and green or whatever. I did purple and green. Um, 
just because it wasn't for any specific baby that I was uh, making this card for. Just wanted to have a couple in my stash. So, um, so I've got the again. Use this to to um, die cut it. And when you're going to put it back together, that's the only thing that's sort of a little challenging. Is you're going to need a minute to take a minute to kind of lay out. Uh, where these pieces are going to go so that you get them stuck in the right spot when you're going to put the, the um, card back together or put the, the uh, die cut pieces back together. And I did, honestly, the first time I put it together, hey, Elise and uh, Mary Kay, glad you're here as well. Um, the first time I put it together, I actually did grab the die and really had it laying right next to me so I could figure out because it's it's not difficult to tell where they go, but these pieces sort of threw me, the ones that were flat on the top and the side, it just took me a minute because apparently I'm um, spatially challenged or something. <laughs> it took me a minute to kind of figure out which way they went on the card front. So that is my only suggestion with these is as you do this, um, if you're struggling like I was, just grab your die and look at where the pieces fit together. Um, if you're using the same piece and just using the, doing the whole background in the same color, then it's not so difficult to figure it out. But when I was trying to kind of trade off the colors, I'm like, uh, I don't know for sure where these pieces go. <laughs> and so I was struggling a little with that. So that is the basics of how it's going to be laid out. Obviously, I have not glued this, so it's not, um, uh, why not lay the die on the card front? Um, well, the reason I didn't lay it on there was because I'd, I mean, I guess you could, but then I'd have to move it and wiggle things around and move it and wiggle things around. So however it works easiest for you, I'm just saying have your die close by. <laughs> that That is uh, my suggestion is just have it close by the first time you use it because it's going to take you a minute to kind of figure out where all the little pieces go. All right, now I'm going to slide these aside. And I just did this the very lazy way when I put the glue on it. Rather than putting adhesive on each little individual piece of um, designer series paper that I had cut. I just did the kind of Amy lazy way of sticking things down and just ran it across the um, piece of basic white cardstock that I had and just made sure that I ran it a couple of times across the middle here so that everything was going to be stuck down. Um, this piece of cardstock ooh, is measures about three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And then I just started assembling. I've got glue stuck on my fingers. Icky. All right, started assembling here up in the upper corner. And again, I kind of knew that this was going to fit just because I had measured it beforehand, knew, knew how things were going to fit together, um, knew that I needed to slide the little pieces side by side here and would have just a little edge around the um, top and bottom of the card. So the other thing with doing the um, adhesive the way that I did it is I do have a little bit of what I'll call wiggle room on it. Um, I don't know why it worked that way, but it does. It's, I was able to kind of slide the pieces around as I needed to. So if I got something stuck down and it wasn't quite straight, look at me, I got paper stuck in my fingers. It wasn't quite straight. Um, the way that I had put the adhesive on here allowed me to kind of shift things and shuffle it around. Um, so that I also found a little bit helpful with it. So oh, and then we're sticking that one face down. That would not be good. All right. Going to just work my way around the edge here, trying to stick them so that they're side by side. And then a lot of it is going to be covered up in the middle, so don't panic too much if you get things that, you know, it doesn't meet up exactly in the center or something like that. Um, for this card design, it didn't really matter because a lot of the center of it was going to be covered. So I didn't, didn't panic too much that my, you know, center wasn't lining up exactly right. Um, because, like I said, it was, you know, there's a little wiggle room in this one. All right, just going to wiggle that one on there. And then stick this piece on, and we're getting down there. So, all right. Scooch that one around just a little bit. And then I'm going to take this piece and stick it here in the corner. All right, and again, I can see I can kind of scooch them around just a little. Again, you're not going to be able to completely move it around and be like, oh, you know, oh, I stuck that on completely wrong. But it gives you a little bit of wiggle room if you've got things that aren't sticking down straight. All right, let's get the last little piece stuck in here. And there we go. So that's it for the background. So again, I just cut, it was one piece of designer series paper that I'd cut to, I actually cut it to about four and three quarters by about 
three and a quarter so that I had a little bit of a, a window around the edge of it. And then just die cut it once and ended up with two card fronts. So as you can see, I kind of, it's just basically the opposite of what this one was. So I started with purple here, now I've got the green here. So, um, so when you do the die cutting, that's the one nice thing is if you wanna make two cards, you certainly can do them at the same time and you'll just have, you know, flip your colors around. All right, next up, I cut a piece of basic white cardstock with one of the uh, stylish shapes dies. This one is the second from the largest of the circles. And just gonna take a blending brush and pool party ink, and we're just gonna ink over the die cut. Um, now I could have done this in pool party, just done the die cut in pool party, but um, I kind of wanted a little softer look, so that was why I went with the blending brush. If you want it to be a little darker or a little quicker, you can certainly just cut a piece of pool party cardstock, but I was kind of going for that, I don't know, baby cloud, whatever <laughs> kind of look to it. Um, so that was why I went with the blending brush and ink instead of um, going with the, the actual paper. Um, you could also cut this from designer series paper if you had a, you know, whatever color you're wanting to use for the sky. Um, you could certainly cut it from designer series paper as well. Um, but again, I was just kind of going for a little bit of a softer look and um, making it look like the sky. That was all. So, all right, let me close that one up. And we're going to stick this, start assembling the card front here. So I'm going to go back to my card base and grab the piece that we put together with a little kind of pinwheel looking die on it. And we're gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere this to the card front. All right, and then got a few more here. These are my chopped in half Stampin' Dimensionals. If you prefer the whole ones or the minis, you can certainly use those if you would like to. Oops, that didn't work out very well. I suppose I need to peel the backing off of it to get it to actually stick. That might be better. Um, all right, but if you prefer the, the whole dimensionals, you certainly can use those. Um, or you can chop them in half like I do because they stick just as well, and I like the size of these a little bit better. And then I'm just going to try to center it um, side to side and top and bottom. And then I'm going to grab my uh, inked circle here, and I'm going to put a little bit of stamp and seal on it. I'm not going to go all the way out to this edge with the stamp and seal, just because I know it's going to hang off on my original. This one uh, is hanging off a little bit, so I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally glue it um, directly to the card front. So I just need to leave a little space over there and sticking it down with the stamp and seal. All right, then I've got, um, again, did a little more die cutting ahead of time. I cut two of the clouds from basic white cardstock. And again, these were cut with the um, Little Dreamers dies. And we're just gonna stick these down with some stamp and seal. Or you can use glue dots or liquid glue, whatever it is that you prefer to use for your adhesive. Um, as long as it's flat, that's the main thing because you're, well, you could put another layer on it if you wanted to, uh, but if you were planning to mail this, if you continue to put more and more dimensionals under it, um, that's just that much more likely that you're gonna actually have to put a second stamp on it. So I was trying to keep it as flat as possible, um, knowing that I was gonna put, you know, a few layers and this is all bumpy on the front. Figured I should probably keep my uh, layering with dimensionals to a minimum. All right, next up, we're gonna do a little stamping finally. And I've got the little, what I think is a lion. I don't know, I colored him the way wrong colors for a lion, but I thought he was cute either way. All right, sorry, my nose is dripping. So I've got um, Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and we're just gonna ink up the little lion image with the star and stamp it on a piece of basic white cardstock. I'm gonna stamp him kind of like that. And because I also need to stamp the stars, since we're gonna die cut those as well. So I got the little star image, again, from the Little Dreamer stamp set. And I got a halo on there, but it doesn't matter at all because I'm gonna be die cutting these. Um, so I was just being not very neat when I was stamping. I'm gonna grab a couple of Stampin' Right, or Stampin' Blends markers. Um, so I've got the light crumb cake and the dark crumb cake. I'm gonna start with the light and we're gonna color in most of the bear, bear, <laughs> lion image. Uh, well, I shouldn't say most. We're gonna color in the face and the little belly on the lion with light crumb cake. All right, there we go. 
And you can go back over it again if you need to. If you have, like I did, and did kind of a sloppy job of coloring, you can certainly add another layer of color over the top to even things out a little bit. So artistic license is fine. Okay, then I'm going with that. It's a brown lion. I don't, I'm sure that there's a brown lion somewhere. Probably not <laughs> in the world. I could have done him yellow, but I don't know with the star. I thought it was going to be too much yellow. And then I thought about doing it orange. And then I thought orange isn't going to go with my color scheme. So I just went with brown. <laughs> so um, uh, babyless right now, but waiting for grandchildren. Yes, it is amazing. It's, we kind of go through here um, different cycles of we need a lot of baby cards and then we don't need any for a while. So my brothers and sisters and I were all old enough now that we aren't really having babies. Um, but I have some nieces and nephews that are getting to be that age. So yep, definitely kind of go through the, the cycles where we need more baby cards. Sometimes it's more wedding cards. Um, so yep, just depends. All right, this is dark crumb cake Stampin' Blends marker that I'm coloring in the rest of the little lion with. Or maybe we'll call him a kitten, and then it doesn't have to be a lion. Then it can be whatever color we want it to be. Although the, the mane around the face probably gives it away. It is actually a lion. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to color out here the little paw. And I realized I forgot to color the very end of his tail or her tail, whatever it is. All right, and then coloring down the side here. Color the little foot. So, all right, yep, there we go. As I'm coloring, hopefully, um, if you're leaving comments, I apologize, I'll look up as soon as I get done with this and, and see if I've missed anything. But um, unfortunately, I can't color and look at comments at the same time. I have enough trouble coloring as it is and trying to stay in the lines. So, all right, let me do a little, little extra color in here because it looks like we got, there we go. Okay, I think we're going to call that good, and then I'm going to come back in and color the end of the little tail that I forgot to color earlier. And I grabbed the wrong end of the marker, but that's all right. Okay, uh, next up I have got, um, what are these? Oh, I almost forgot the bubble bath, and I'm going to use the light bubble bath, and all that I used this for was to just color in in the ears and give it a little little shade of pink in the ears. And, you know, I know pink is not a very boy color, but that's too bad. I'm saying that they all have pink ears. My brown lion has pink ears. <laughs> so, all right, then I'm gonna got Lemon Lolly, and I'm starting with the light one, and I'm gonna color in the star image here. And, and then I'm gonna come, actually I'll go ahead and color all these little stars here while, I'm, while I've got the light Lemon Lolly out. And we're not gonna do very much shading with the dark on this one, but um, we'll just add a little bit of dark Lemon Lolly kind of around the edges here on the one side. I don't know, we'll kind of go like that. And then same thing here, we'll just add a little bit of dark lemon lolly. I don't know if there's really any rhyme or reason. And there's not a big difference between the, the two shades of lemon lolly, so I'm not sure that it really even matters. If you add, add in, maybe you could just add another layer of the light if you wanted to, or I don't know. If you're better at shading, you can probably color however you want to with it. So there we go. So that is all done. Uh, last thing we're going to stamp here before I start doing some die cutting is I'm going to do the sentiment. And I've got um, Little Baby Big Love, and we're just going to stamp that in Fresh Freesia ink to coordinate with the background on it on a piece of basic white cardstock. There we go. Close that up before I stick my fingers in it. And then I'm just going to grab my dies and do some die cutting. So again, the sentiment I cut out with the smallest of the little rectangles from the nested essentials dies. And then I've got the dies here for the little lion as well as for the stars. Um, and we'll be die cutting those. So I'll be off screen for just one second doing some die cutting and I'll be right back. Hopefully y'all are having a fantastic Friday. I can't even believe it's Friday already. So, oh, there we go. So there's my sentiment. Now let me grab these pieces. Done here. Oops. 
like the dies for my star slid a little. I'll see how bad. You can see how yucky my, ooh, we may have to restamp the stars. Thought I was gonna salvage them, but I, I don't think we can because I made a mess. So we'll just really quickly uh, recolor and restamp those and try it a second time so I can see if I can get them stamped and die cut straight this time. Yikes. <laughs> so, all right, let's get these out of the way before I make a big mess with that. All right, so we'll ink it again, turn, there we go. I think we, yep, got them all on the paper. Do some quick coloring again. Ah, oh, you knew I'd have to use lemon lolly. Of course I have to use lemon lolly. It's such a ni nice yellow color, and it's so much brighter than um, Daffodil Delight. While I do like Daffodil Delight, I really love lemon lolly, and I can't help myself. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's definitely one of my favorite colors, and I do like yellow. I know there are some that don't love yellow, but yellow is actually a color that I like a lot. Um, and this is like my favorite yellow I think we've ever had. It's better than Barely Banana was, and I thought I loved that color the best, but nope, this one's it. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Let me try to die cut this a second time, and hopefully we'll get it on here straight. That's much better. Much happier with that die cut. All right. Get those off there, and you can see my horrible looking um, cutting pads. I can't help it. The cutting mats, I just, I use them until they snap in two <laughs> because I'm cheap and I don't know. They actually, for me, stay flatter. I know a lot of people complain about the cutting plates warping. For me, they stay flatter when I actually use them and cut and cut and cut and cut with them like that they lay flatter and behave better. So that's why I do it. Not because I'm cheap. Okay, it's because I'm cheap. <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to peel off my little stamp of dimensionals here. I stuck them kind of all over the back of the little lion. And then we're just going to take that and stick it here on the card front and try to get it so that the balloon is, the star balloon is kind of straight up and down. And then I'm going to grab some little mini glue dots and we will stick, maybe, where did my third star go? Don't tell me I'm going to have to do this again. Come on. Did I leave it on the plate? No. All right. Did I throw it with the trash? Well, this one's a pretty decent looking star, so we'll just go with that one. I don't know where the one was that I actually cut. <laughs> Gosh. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, all good. All right, let's stick some stars here on the card front. Just gonna put one little one down here. There, where did that appear from? I am losing my mind absolutely. Okay, there we go. It must have just been stuck underneath the card and I totally missed it. <laughs> so, all right, glue dots on the back of the correct stars. I'm gonna take one and kind of tuck it in behind the little lion's head. And I'm not smooshing down the two here that I'm gonna put up uh, on this part of the card until I know where they land and that they look where I, like what I want them to and then I can take them and smush them down because glue dots you can actually kind of peel them back off and um, stick them down a second time if you get them stuck in some sort of crazy way that you don't like so all right uh, how's the air quality um, and actually it was really bad here on what day was it not yesterday yesterday was Thursday Wednesday um, it was really bad, like smoky. The sky was orange. It was kind of scary looking outside with all the smoke from the Canadian wildfires that kind of blew down our way. And then yesterday, it cleared out quite a bit. So it was much better yesterday. And um, today, it's a lot better as well. So now they're still saying that we shouldn't be outside like, you know, running a marathon in this, but the skies are much better and I can't smell the smoke and everything like I could on Wednesday. It was really yucky here. So, all right. Um, fresh freesia for the sentiment on the inside. And hopefully everybody else, I know that it was kind of going down south after went through New Jersey, New York area. It was kind of headed down south. So I don't know, hopefully you all down south are not getting in, you know, with a really bad smoke. Cause it's, it was icky. So, and then tuxedo black memento ink and the stars. And we're gonna just stamp those up here next to the sentiment. 
and grab my lemon lolly marker and color those again. Again, I'm using Stampin' Blends um, with Tuxedo Black Memento ink. They're designed to kind of work together. One is um, the Memento ink is alcohol-based, or alcohol, is water-based, and the blends, or what I'm trying to say, are alcohol-based, so they kind of repel each other, so they work together uh, quite nicely without getting all the smearies and smudgies that you get if you used alcohol-based ink with them. Um, all right, got a little strip of the designer series paper that um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on the bottom of the panel here. This is about five eighths of an inch wide and it's about six inches long. It was just a piece that I trimmed off uh, when I was making the card front. Sticking that down here. And then I'm going to take my paper snips and trim off the edge here. So. Your throat's getting scratchy when you go outside. Sorry, I missed that part of the comment earlier. I've been okay. Like I said, the one day when it was really smoky, I had my eyes were watering and it was kind of yucky, but since then, it hasn't been too bad for me. So hopefully it'll continue to get better for you too. All right, using a little stamp and seal to adhere this to the inside of the card. And then I'm gonna fold it closed and then actually flip it over and do my kind of a light crease with the bone folder because the front is all embossed so I'm trying not to smash all the embossing that I've just done and made it look all pretty on the card front. So that is it for my card today. This is a, such a sweet little stamp set bundle. Um, love the dies that go with it. Love the little um, kind of stitched look to the dies as well. Uh, if you haven't checked out the patchwork pieces dies, definitely go take a peek at those in the annual catalog. Um, they work great together. So Hopefully you like these. Like I said, and definitely just order it because I don't want you to be sad that you didn't get it. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, so that's it. Quick little simple cards. And again, the I think you could change this up to be whatever colors you want it to be. If you prefer to have, you know, a girl card, boy card, or more of a, a neutral card like I did here, you could switch up the colors and have it be whatever you want it to be. Um, so, all right. Well, thanks for joining me today. I did want to let you know next week, Tuesday, I am going to have to go about an hour later. So I'm planning to go live around three o'clock Eastern time um, with my next card. We've got, you know, it's summer and the schedules change constantly. So I will let you know and I'll post um, notifications out on my blog and on my Facebook page. I'll let you know when I'm planning to be live. But like I said, I'm planning to go live around three o'clock next week, Tuesday, and then next week, Friday, around two o'clock Eastern time back, hopefully on my regular schedule again. So thanks for joining today. All the details for this card will be posted on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. Um, it'll go live around eight o'clock in the morning. The blog post will, and I'll link directly to it so you can take a peek at all the measurements, find the PDF tutorial and all that stuff um, out there on my blog tomorrow. Thanks again for joining, and we will chat with you all soon.